It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. Our guest for week one, Jonathan Grenard. John, I mean, I feel like you're a vet. It's only year three for you. Do <laughs> yeah. you feel like a vet? You're like a leader of this defense, but more so you're one of the guys that's been a fixture through a lot of changes. In right, the right. And it feels that way, kind of. I mean, being here, going on year three, um, obviously different coaches, obviously every year so far. But um, I think this year feels a little different. I mean, uh, the energy feels good. Um, I think guys are understanding what the standard is. We're understanding what Lovey wants, what the organization is about. And I'm um, just trying to establish a new one. And obviously, you know, in the, in the past, it wasn't we didn't live up to that. But I think now this year, we're just all on that same mission and we all want to court. Yeah, you've gone through a, several coaching changes, but at least with Lovey being the new head coach, right. you had him as your defensive coordinator mm -hmm. last year. Does it feel like there's something that you can really build on just knowing his scheme and knowing what he's looking for when you're out on the Right. Field? I think now it's just, I think, uh, it's taking that his defensive mindset and, you know, making everybody on the team, including the offense and special teams, understand what he wants too. So I think it's just... We use that now on the defensive side to, uh, you know, spread that to the offense to help them out understand, you know, what that, um, what the mission is and what the standard is. And I think they already know it's self-explanatory. I mean, we all we're trying to win here. We all understand what we're chasing. Um, but it definitely does help to have a, a guy like like Lovey coming back, your defensive coordinator, and now he's the head coach, um, and obviously leading it the right way. And uh, and it's not hard to follow it. Like I mentioned before, it's just easy to follow because we all understand what we're trying to do. What was your offseason like? I know it's yeah. probably not the way you wanted yeah. to spend it. You For were sure. out there during OTAs. You weren't doing much. We saw you start to right. take snaps, obviously, in the preseason and then training camp. But right. tell us about your offseason, just getting healthy and what yeah. that was like for you. I used that time to pretty much just work on the other aspects of my body that I felt like that were weaker, you know, or that needed tending to. Um, and I feel good. I mean, they, like you, as you mentioned, uh, it was tough watching the guys during OTAs. Obviously, just continues to take reps, being out there, you know, with the guys sweating and grinding. Um, but we we understand the business. We understand what the mission is and understand the mental reps is was huge for me. I just went back over my old film, watching the guys that are in there now, um, just trying to add to my game and um, and just correct the stuff that I did that made me be a better and more efficient player. Yeah, I was going to ask you, yeah. what did you learn about yourself through all those mental reps and not being on the field? Yeah, uh, that I, I think too much at the time. So, and I'm a bit huge overthinker. Hmm. Um, and I think that's my issue just in general in life, period, not just with ball. And I think whenever you can do that for anybody to just dumb it down to where they can just play fast and, and, and do one thing, or the mission is – um, and what they're asking you to do on that defense, offense or defense, it makes the game go faster and you're more comfortable, and that way you can just play faster. And I think overall that was the mission I was trying to get to. Each year I'm trying to learn something that, that I can build off of for, from last year. What about pass rushing? I mean, yeah. you're just known as obviously a great pass rusher in <laughs> this right. defense. Uh, I know that you have had your conversations with Laramie Tunsil and mm -hmm. Titus Howard, especially in camp. Right. So how do you improve your pass rushing heading into year three, and how did those guys really help you? Yeah, I mean, like I said, even today, I mean, we're going to do it every day. We, we're going to go against each other. You know, we don't go on each other going against each other in the game. Um, I just think to take these to pick each other's brains um from pass rush stuff, just a little small things because we all as all pass rushers, we all think the same kind of we understand there's there's a million ways to get to the quarterback, but at the same time it's it's, it's kind of a foundational way that everybody gets to the quarterback, whether it's a certain move that is that is adjustable for one guy or fits him. Um, but yeah, we do that all the time. And I just think overall it, it helps us. Iron sharpens iron. Um, and these are guys that obviously at the top of their game with Laramie and, and, and Titus as well. Um, and I think if we continue to do that amongst ourselves with the guys who got in our room across the defensive line, I just think that um, it'll be great for us. And, I, and to build that camaraderie as well, just so that way we know going into the game and we can always just uh, help each other out for whatever we need. Do you try different moves on them in practice? Yeah, you got try, to. Try them out and see, like, <laughs> hey, how's this going to yeah, work? Yeah, you, you, you kind of got you kind of have to. they call you out when it's something new they haven't seen before? Uh, Kind of, yeah. Because it's more so like at the end of the day, we don't want to lose. I mean, uh, some some guys, some days you want to get an extra rep just to kind of see whether you didn't like how he beat you on that rep. You're trying to get another win or you're trying to work something that you didn't before um, that you might have seen. So I think that that's the good thing about it. You know, uh, we never get into it, that that type of stuff, just because we understand what we're trying to do. You get a guy get hit in the mouth or stuff like that. We understand right. this ball. We understand that's that's a good thing about having a good relationship outside of the locker room or just inside on the football field to understand the mission. Um, we can try a lot of things, and at the same time, we just got to be be real with each other when it comes to it. If, it, if it's not a move, it ain't working. You can be like, nah, it ain't <laughs> like work. take that out yeah, of your no, repertoire. Like, literally, it ain't say, like, nah, I'm gonna do this every time, and it's like, okay, so you know, you just got to keep building, and vice versa. So um, I, I think it's beneficial for everybody. Well, one of the old linemen gave you credit for something. Mm -hmm. AJ Can said you were the best trash talker on the team. <laughs> he was asked who the best best trash talker was. He said that. Um, <laughs> He, he said that you're the loudest one, okay. at least in camp you were. I and he said uh, it was all good stuff, very yeah, chippy. For sure. And I find that kind of hard to believe because you're like this whenever we see you, very yeah, smiley yeah. and happy. But what do you like on the field with those guys? I try to uh, turn it I try to turn it up a little bit uh, just because, I mean, if, if I feel the team needs to that time where the practice is a little sluggish or sometime, sometimes a little bit, I'll just throw it in there. Just talk a little trash, get us going. <laughs> um, I, I, I like to keep it friendly. Uh, sometimes it's not as friendly as others. But uh, overall, we just we, we love the game. I love the game of football. I just love to 
to compete. And I think if we're out there, why not compete? I mean, it's it's already hot as ever out there anyway. So if we're out here, we might as well compete and try to both get, not just get through it, but actually win through it, you know, and push through it. So, um, yeah, I like to do that. I mean, I've been trying to do it on uh, since I was a youngin. Um, but and as you say, I kind of look like this on the outside. Uh, I try to keep this. I try to keep this. So that's a good thing. I'm glad you I get keep it all that. out on the yeah, field. Yeah, I'm glad when people see me off the field. They're like, hey, okay, you cool, this <laughs> guy. You see, I don't have my glasses on today, so uh, they, they think I'm a little non sophisticated right now. But uh, other than that, yeah, I try to I try to keep it a little keep that on the field. What about during part. games? During game time? I mean, yeah. what is that? I'm I'm fascinated with trash talking on yeah. the field in games. I mean, what is what is the art to good trash talking? Is yeah. it funny? Is it mean? Is it annoying? It just depends. When do you start? When do you stop? Right. I, I think it just depends. Um, it depends on the guy, first of all. It depends on how to... Well, first of all, not the guy. It depends on how to, the game is going. If you're winning... We were discussing this. Right. One. Okay, right. So if, if, you're, if you're winning the game, then that's, that's, that's grounds to talk. Um, but you make a couple plays, you, you kind of have to pace it. You, do you want to talk because you all, it better be a, a play that you know gets you off the field? Because if you're talking trash, you're and you still gotta, on the field. And you're still yeah. on the field. You got to go five, six more <laughs> plays. Then, then it's, you're gonna be real tired. So I just think you got to play with it a little bit. But overall. Um, I just try to go with it. I mean, I just play with the feel. I mean, it gets me tired sometimes talking trash, so I got to pick and choose my battles. <laughs> but uh, for the most, thinking, yeah, yeah, for the most part, um, I'm, I'm gonna try to get under the skin if I make a couple plays, just so that I can just get myself going too. Because I mean, it's fun. I mean, I don't, I don't mean no no ill intent at all. You're never gonna hear me go below the belt about some stuff. I'm just trying to talk trash to get us both through the game for sure. What about division opponents? Because you're gonna see these guys twice a year. Is it like a series to be continued? You're going against these guys quite a bit, right? You would think you would think so, uh, but I haven't. It's surprising I haven't talked as much trash. Uh, but I just think overall we just got to get to that point when we can do that. I think it, it, when we get to that point, we all can confidently walk around with mm. our chest out to the point where we know we know our, our identity. We know we're actually putting it on tape. We're getting the results we want. Then I think that's you know not only is the, the film going to show. I mean, you can then you can be able to kind of talk a little bit at the time too because you know that you're you're confident what you're doing and you know that it's no matter what they're going to do, you're going to win. So um, when we get to that point, I think that's you're going to see a huge turn. Um, and I'm definitely going to continue to do my best every day. Whether we like that or not, I'm still going to be talking trash to keep us going because at the end of the day, uh, we're still growing and we still play defense, so we got to stop the boys every time they try to score. All right, well, speaking of division opponents, you open up the season against the Colts. Them and Matt Colts. Ryan, you grew up in Georgia. Right, you said you right. grew up watching him. Right. I mean, what's that like? I know Lovey Smith has talked about it, just facing those guys again, the way they dominated right. last year. It's kind of good sure. to start off the season against them. But what are your thoughts on the Colts and, <clears throat> and with Matt Ryan, a guy that's really been a veteran and Right. Kind of makes that team look a little bit different. He does. I mean, he's a great quarterback. I mean, uh, like I said, I grew up a Georgia kid, um, and watching him coming up, obviously when he got drafted there, he kind of turned the Falcons around. I mean, we were blackout when we were in Atlanta um, when I, around that time. So um, for him to change that around and give the city a little hope at that time, he was huge for the city. So I just admire a guy like that, um, his true character. But but on the football side, he's a great quarterback. I mean, everybody's, everybody know him. He's well-respected, uh, makes the reads real good. He fits that offense kind of like, you know, Carson Wentz and Phillip Rivers a year before. Um, you know, these guys were Frank Reich, and he's, he's a quarterback's coach. Um, it fits these guys. So I think overall um, we got to make just make them feel uncomfortable. A lot of teams that had success against him in the past has just made them feel uncomfortable with his pass rush, um, games, or anything, just get him off of his, off his spot, make him uh, get out of rhythm. Um, you gotta you got to do that against a, a vet like that because he's seen it all, he knows it all, he's done it all. So I just think overall, all, we stop them and then you get to 28 that, that the running back they got a Taylor I mean he's a great back as well um, we stopped that aspect and I think overall they're going to continue to just come to us at the times we're trying to just get them to those uh, long situations and passing down so I think we'll give ourselves a really good shot there all right you talk about growing up in Georgia so I have to ask you about the sure. John Grenard Foundation you oh, just yeah. started it this offseason right. so Tell me what the what was the driving force be behind starting it and, and who you really hope to help with that. Yeah, um, I mean, like I said, I'm a small town kid. I, I, from, for the ones who are from Georgia, I'm from Hiram, Georgia. But you know, people ask me where you from. I say Atlanta because it's, it's they just know like what a Atlanta general, is. You know, yeah. they know general. So I'm like twenty. I'm about thirty minutes outside of Atlanta, going north. Um, and it's a small town, and it's kind of surrounded by two or three of the biggest counties almost in Georgia, you know, Cobb County um, and Fulton, obviously, where Atlanta it resides, um, and obviously Douglas County and those counties around it. So we kind of sit right in that middle, and I just think me creating that creating a foundation was to level the playing field so that we would all have equal opportunity. And that was our one. That was our mission statement. That's my mission statement is to level the playing fields because of you know when you look at McEachern and well, I'm saying McEachern is a school in Cobb County or the Hill Groves, you know these bigger schools that are surrounding um, our county, they get all the shine because they're just they just look better. They're obviously there and they just put out more. So I just think my what I wanted to do there, and it's not just hire them. It just it kind of goes for anybody that's overlooked. And I just think that me getting my hands on them. Um, and, and the people in within our foundation get our hands on the youth around there and, and, and being a part of that to make sure that we're not overlooking. We can supply the people and the kids uh, with those uh, stuff that makes them put them on that level playing field. 
I love that, and that's just that's what I'm all about because I just know me. I was a three star recruit coming out, didn't have many offers like that coming out of school. Um, I had to prove myself a lot, you know. At the same time, I didn't have a lot of you know the 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 the, the resources to get to where I needed to go at the time. Um, but I was fortunate enough to eventually build those relationships to get that. And I just think I don't want everyone to start at that path when when I have the authority to make them all on a level playing field. So that's what we're about, and I think that I'm gonna continue to drive for it. We had our first successful camp. Um, this oh, past nice. off season, um, youth camp, and it was amazing. We had a lot, a huge turnout. Even though the rain tried to get us, um, we still had an amazing turnout. About seventy kids came out. Wow. Um, and we're gonna continue to keep trying to go out and, and be bigger and better next year. And we're still building those relationships by teaching financial, uh, financial literacy. Um, you know, football stuff or life stuff in general, just life coaches. And I think. In totality, we're going to be good for the community. All right, great stuff. Love to see it. Uh, congrats on the foundation. Appreciate it. Best of luck in year three, Jonathan. Thank you so much, DP. Thanks for watching and go Texans. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new content.